Welcome to episode five. We have a great session today. And I first want to highlight, we'll say three main paths or I would suggest of why entrepreneurship program and the type of people and individual or students that we prepare. So like an entrepreneur, we prepare students to create and start their own business. The very traditional view of what an entrepreneur However, entrepreneurship and innovation is much bigger and broader. In fact, many organizations need people who act entrepreneurial, act innovative, act, have a creative mindset to manage their products, to develop new services, new products, and to create value from my, even a firm, a very, a private firm, a non-for-profit, public, a government agency. So we prepare students also to be innovators, even within the firm. And lastly, what I would suggest makes the entrepreneurship most unique is we're preparing students and empowering them to create careers that they, they define themselves, not by what others or other majors define in terms of their jobs, in terms of their, in terms of their career or professional trajectory, but the empowerment that they can create what life, a job, a career, um, and a path that they define instead of what is a very narrow track that many jobs or professions, and in fact, those jobs and professions may not be there in the future. So we need to empower students, entrepreneurs, innovators to, to forge their own way. So those are three main paths within the entrepreneurship program. And today we're going, we have a special guest, Brandon Hernandez, and he's going to, what I would say, add the special sauce. And I would like to frame today like this. So Brandon is a higher ed professional and I've known him for four years and he's worked within the university in many different capacities, but also has many different experiences. And Brandon always brings that special sauce and, and a bit about why I think education is like a recipe and needs that special sauce. So for instance, we can start off with good ingredients, right? We can have an organic squash or wonderful organic lamb. And those are the starting base or the starting foundation of, of a good recipe or a good, good experience of, of dining. But we know that that's not the only aspects of, of cooking or a recipe that we need. And it's this, these, you know, maybe important nuggets, right? The, 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 the starting off with those good ingredients us as individuals, as students, as human beings that come prepared, that are able to connect the dots and past experiences and education that you had. And you're ripe to blend, to mesh, to grow, and to add that, that nuance that makes that raw lamb or raw squash or caramel, you know, before they're caramelized or whatever, spices to the mix to make that sensorial experience, right? Taste, smell, even hear, touch. So I would like to suggest that education is much like the idea of cooking and making a gourmet recipe. There's other factors, right? If you don't have the right temperature or how long you cook it or how you slowly, I, I think of my grandmother and when she would make sugu or pasta or sauce or gravy, we, we called it gravy, and she would slowly, Cook for many hours and stirring it with the garlic and the olive oil and the oregano and etc. And it was only through over time those blended to make a very experience and taste and flavor than those individual substances is individually. So we want to think we're adding this mix and this time and these spices. And I suggest love to our recipe of education to make sensorial experience and adds more value and is more transformative. So uh, Brandon is one who has this type of insight into what adds these spices or what adds these other factors to make sure that we're creating more value out of our current educational journey, out of our career, to have a even more transformative experience and create our own path and add even more value as we go through our education. So I would like to welcome and turn the Zoom over to Brandon. And I know he has a few points, but let's give Brandon a Zoom. Which 
for applause, but Brandon, I thank you for taking time out of your day to be here and to add that special sauce to our education to make sure we have a, an even more flavorful experience before we graduate and after we graduate. So Brandon, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm really happy to be here. And I guess the way you put it is that special sauce and I've never thought of it that way, but it does make sense in terms of kind of that whole package. What does it mean to actually invest in yourself as a person and take that to the next level? Um, a little bit about me, my background has really been mostly in social sciences, higher education, career services. Right now I do graduate recruitment. Um, so I'm just gonna plug it in. Feel free to hit me up for graduate programs at the College of Business. But for the most part, you know, I've always taken an approach to working with students about how to identify the goals, identify solutions, but also figure out the different pathways between the goal and the solution. Um, and so I really kind of summarized three points today and I, I have a, a slide to share, um, but really it's about how do you apply yourself beyond what is expected? You know, it used to be getting a degree would automatically lead to a job and that's no longer the case whatsoever. Um, so it's about what extra recipes or ingredients or special sauces you're adding to the mix. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen really quick. Um, can you guys see that screen? I believe it's working. All right. So first point I wanted to make is a classroom is not the only place you can learn something new. And what I mean by that is, you know, obviously there's value in higher education in itself but it's not the one rest or ingredient that you need to make the full recipe. And so this is where it comes into play where you really have to kind of think outside the box. I encourage you to utilize your autonomy to learn what you need or want to know. And that can be applied in a lot of different aspects of your life. Um, let's say you're looking at it, looking for an internship um, and that internship requires Salesforce knowledge or experience. And you don't have that Salesforce knowledge experience. You can access tutorials on Salesforce. You can go on LinkedIn Learning. You can go on YouTube and learn as much as you can about that software or platform. All of a sudden on your resume, before you apply, you can add it and say self-training in Salesforce or studying in Salesforce. Whatever it may be, that's gonna be less time and money investing in you as an employee by a new employer. So you're already bringing not only the skill set that they're looking for, even if it's at a beginner navigational knowledge, but also adding that keyword to your resume that shows that you are looking for that next jump and you have the initiative to learn on your own and apply it to your job, your job, whatever it may be. But there's just so many different ways you could also look at that. Um, I really value people in terms of connections, um, whether it's a professor or a client or a colleague, um, somebody who has different experiences are always gonna be able to share those experiences and kind of share that wisdom. But the other aspect is your own community. For example, I have a lot of students who are interested in graduate education, but also have a plan to start their own business, whether they're in entrepreneurship or not, right? They, they have a goal of like th that includes starting a business. So the one thing I encourage them to do is look at your local resources and learn something new. So you could always go to the St. Pete Greenhouse and they have free workshops um, that are re you can register for free based on business planning, um, startup, financial incentives to the city, um, the legality of permits, whatever it may be, so that you can start kind of navigating that realm and getting the knowledge. And then in itself, the St. Pete Greenhouse is a great hub of just networking with local business leaders in general. Um, so it's just really about applying that autonomy to figure out what you need to know or how to know it. Of course, check your sources. Don't just randomly, you know, find something online, make sure it's valuable and it brings a lot of um, value to your next experience or your goal. But the other aspect that I always encourage people to look at is what are your passions? And I can be cheesy and say we should all have one passion, right? But I actually believe that we have passions that are multitude. We have a lot of different passions, whether it's um, an art form, um, social media, whatever it may be, that passion also has a set of transferable skills. So for example, I've been doing photography and you know editing Photoshop. I taught myself when I was 13. And in every position I've ever had, I've been able to actually apply those skills, even though it wasn't in the original job description. And yes, you know, somebody might not be asking me to do that, but it allows me to implement what I'm passionate about in my daily work. And that brings value to that experience alone. But I'm also being able to share that skill to drive my organization or my community. Um, so it's always about thinking about what your passions can actually bring to the table. Um, 
And that's always going to be really key when you're meeting new people. They want to know what you bring to the table. Um, when you're applying to a graduate program, they want to know who you bring to the table as well. So it's always about really figuring out what beyond the traditional set of skills or education do we really bring as individuals to an organization or a program? And so I encourage you to really identify those skills that you've probably already developed over a few years, if not at least one year. And um, you know, the next thing that kind of comes with that is accept the happenstance. And happenstance is the idea that sometimes coincidence happen, um, things fall into your lap in your place. And at that point, you can either choose to face it and say, this is an obstacle or this is an opportunity. And I, I would be remiss not to mention that there's a global pandemic, right? We hear it every day. It's permeating through our culture. It's in all different types of marketing. But a common theme that I've been hearing about the pandemic is, you know, this has really disrupted a lot of lives. It's disrupted a lot of trajectories. And people are looking at this time as a great opportunity to reinvest in themselves, whether it's through professional development, trying new things, meeting new people virtually and safely, of course. Um, but it also just speaks to the fact that you know, I could have just taken this opportunity or this pandemic and chosen it to be an obstacle and say, this is going to inflict pain in my life and I'm not going to allow myself to move forward. But it could be worse. I could be somebody that's actually sick. I could be somebody that does not have shelter, does not have access to food or a job. There's so many different aspects to my life that make the idea of me thinking of it as an obstacle minute. And so I really see it as an opportunity for me to drive positive change. Um, but at the same time, let's say you are stuck and you don't have opportunities and you don't have a job and you're really at a point where feeling stuck is kind of just normal. And that's OK because that happens a lot. And sometimes feeling stuck can actually be a catalyst. It allows you to assess your options and move forward with a new plan. And so an example of that, just kind of personally, I went from being a career advisor to working in customer support for a startup. And it was a great experience. I, I really enjoyed it. It was an interesting experience. It taught me a lot about myself, but it got to a point where I just felt stuck. And at that point, I really had to assess what skill sets do I have? What do I bring to the table? How can I look for jobs and apply that? So obviously I applied to USF. I've worked in higher ed, that makes me relevant. But when it comes to recruiting in this new role, the ability to manage conversations from different inquiries about different programs, features, whatever it may be. I learned that skill set from working at that startup in terms of managing the expectations and managing stress levels of clients. So the idea that even though that was a kind of not as expected in terms of being as positive as I would have wanted, I still took something away from it and I was able to apply it to my next experience or job. Um, sorry if I'm rambling. If you guys have any questions, feel free to chime in. You know, happy to answer anything. Um, but the last main point I wanted to talk about is controlling your first impression um, and really thinking about that perspective that people are seeing from, you know, from the other side. And what I mean by that is similar to what uh, Steve said, you being here today, having your camera on, being ready to engage, that alone already provides a really good first impression that you're controlling and you're able to implement in every aspect of your life. But at the same time, it's more than that. Um, and specifically during this time, we're all being very virtual. It's very hard for people to engage because they might be fatigued with you know, the current circumstances. But if we're not engaging as if we were in person, then what's the point? <laughs> Why are we, you know, doing this virtually and zooming and webcaming, whatever it may be. So I always encourage you to approach every interaction. Um, even if it's virtual, you know, I I try to bring my energy. I try to bring my my smile to every conversation I have. Obviously, it's important to read the room. You know, not everybody is in that same state of mind, but I think it's worthwhile to expend that energy in being yourself and authentic. Because again, just because it's virtual doesn't really change the circumstance. We're still working, meeting with the same people. So why does the modality of what we do really have to change our authenticity? Um, so every interaction, approach it authentically if possible. Um, but also choose how people see or hear you. You know, one aspect is again turning on the camera and the mic. But another aspect is let's say you're looking for a job or internship or you're networking. Instead of picking up the phone when you get a random call and saying hello say, good afternoon, this is Brandon, because it really shows that not only are you 
taking every call seriously, if it is serious, also shows that you have a connotation of being ready and being not formal, but ready to engage. And so even something like that as simple, just a change in habit, it, it works wonders because sometimes you get the call you're looking for and that's great. And they're like, hi, this is blah, blah, blah. And I'm calling for Brandon. They're like, this is him. You reached them or it's a random call and you're just showing that there's like an actual person there. So they, they're probably not going to call, call again. I don't know exactly what I'm trying to say by that, but always approach a situation in a way that allows you to really control the impression of the other people. Um, for LinkedIn, if you're adding people, it doesn't hurt to add a personalized note. It doesn't take long. Um, you can always let it be that generic default message that LinkedIn includes, or you can really take it to the next level and just really emphasize how you know that person, how you want to get to know that person. Um, so always think about how you can control your impression in front of others. Um, and then, I mean, obviously we're probably going to get into questions, Steve, but I did want to leave you guys with one last favorite quotes, if not the favorite, it's don't worry about the world coming to an end today. It's already tomorrow in Australia. Um, Charles M. Schultz, he created the Peanuts comic, um, Charlie Brown, Scoop, um, Snoopy. But I always look at this quote because not only is it accurate in terms of real life logistics, but it's also the idea that we, we look at the 24 hours that we're alive in a day and we assume that it's it's limited to just those 24 hours. When it really, time is a social construct. Um, we can do whatever we want with our time. Time is a resource, but unless there's like a black hole that swallows the earth, I don't really see time ending for us. Um, so take that time to really enjoy what you do, meet the people you wanna meet and experience everything that you can while you can. That's it, folks. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. I, I would like to take a moment if we could um, maybe um, take a moment. I would like to share with the students about connecting what Brandon has shared to specific aspects that you guys go through in my classes. I can't speak for the other classes. And if we, I don't, is there a way for us to un unshare this screen? Yeah, I'll do that right Wonderful. now. Wonderful. Wonderful. So there are a few things that stood out to me that says, all right, what Brandon is saying here, how is it being translated or how is it being experienced in the, or partly at least? And I would like to what really stands out so we can make and connect these dots. So Brandon said, knowing your passion. We all have many passions. Um, it could range in many times. So where did we learn about exploring our passions and potentially seeing the value of it? All of you took my creativity and innovation course. There, what did you do? You did a creativity assessment. Where are you most creative? When are you most creative? Once all of these are to help you find out when you are able to be most productive or in terms of creativity, but also to evaluate and help you find out where your passions are as well. This is one tool that we use to filter to help you. Now you can see where that connects to what what Brandon is saying and using that passion to add value to whatever job or task you're doing. Wonderful. He talked about first impressions and being present. And I know that we've talked about, you know, we got to be game time ready. Well, there are thousands of other people applying for a job, thousands of people networking, trying to get ahead. To be a differentiator, Brandon is suggesting and we're suggesting is Bring that energy and passion in this virtual box. Expand, get the light, get a whatever. So the point is differentiate yourself and that puts you one or two steps ahead of everyone else who's not doing that. And I think you guys know a lot of people are not doing that. So a simple task to be game time ready that already differentiates yourself from the rest of the pack. Wonderful. Uh, outside learning outside of class. Do you guys know why we run this course, our courses like a boot camp, and why we solve innovation challenges? First of all, that's actually how they solve them in real life. And you can just Google and challenges and innovation intermediaries. Thousands and thousands of companies are leveraging the crowd or innovators. But also, you can take these packages and these solutions that you're making and apply them to innovation challenges that already exist 
where you can get more experience, where you can win money, where you can solve a challenge that you're passionate about as well. So that's outside the box and then or learning outside of the classroom. And then we already heard from Nick's Pri Nick Price, an alumni in the program, where he said, Steve, my life changed when I entered a pitch contest and realized I can be an entrepreneur and I have a business there. And lastly, the role of happenstance. We know this word as entrepreneurs and innovators very, very well. We call it serendipity. The things that we don't see that are opportunity or things that might happen at random or randomness. And these, this is embedded or a salient, a direct or salient concept or depending on which class we're in. But serendipity or happenstance is maximizing on the opportunity, accepting it, but seeing, you know, Wherever there is good or bad, there can be an oppor opportunity depending how we choose to, to view that with our perspective. So I'm very happy with all the points that Brandon has shared. And these are just a few examples of how they translate to our coursework. And I would like to prime the students um, to get ready for questions. And before I turn it over and ask them if they have questions for Brandon, I kind of would like to to ask you if you could recommend a book or a series of books that may help them prepare for the next level beyond the, the bullet that you gave. Is there something that comes to mind or a, a newspaper or a blog or um, a, a YouTube? Is there something that, you know, it doesn't have to be all of those points, but it, that's something that continuously, that's a combination of learning, but also expanding on those and and helping the students as well. Is there something that comes in, comes to mind, Brandon? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 that's a really good question <laughs> um, because I, I feel like I consume a lot of different forms of media. Um, you know, in terms of a podcast, this is more from an outside perspective, not necessarily in business, but it does sometimes touch on what it be, means to be like an entrepreneur here and there. But there's this podcast, um, Side Effects, Small Doses, with Amanda Seals um, and she's a comedian, but it really focuses on the experience of what it's like to be um, BIPOC person of color, whatever it may be, but it, it's just an interesting perspective because she's been able to make a business out of her passion for African-American um, heritage studies. And it's just been very interesting. Um, in terms of other media, I would say as, as cliche as it is, I do believe that NPR <laughs> is the most easiest way to go in terms of news. I think being informed and knowing what's happening is always going to be important, regardless of which industry you're in. And sometimes ignorance is bliss, but when you're not educated on what's happening around the world, that that you lose your value in that as well. And you lose your autonomy to be able to make change. Um, beyond that, I mean, this isn't necessarily an entrepreneurial book. Um, but there's this book called Ishmael by Daniel Quinn. Um, definitely more aligned with environmental ethics, but in terms of perspective, it really flips what we think of about in terms of being a species and how as humans we practice speciesism is, it's just a very, it's a good switch in terms of what we are as humans. Um, beyond that, there was one book, I'm trying to remember, oh man. Also, just kind of off the top of my head, really quick. No, no problem. I'm, I'm throwing you a fastball as well. So, but I think, I think this idea of constantly learning or outside of the classroom, have consumed content, podcasts, or do it continuously so you both keep up to date, but at the same time, you're at the cutting edge because that might provide opportunity, seeing where the discussion or trends are going, et cetera. And that has to come from several sources because. As you guys know, we want to be niche, right? That's what the definition of creating a business, right? You can't solve all problems for everyone. And you, by definition, you have to be an expert in a niche. So therefore, you need many sources to get a range of niches or related niches to help you patch a bigger narrative or story or opportunity. Now I'd like to open the floor to to the students and our guests if we have any questions or thoughts or comments and if not uh, of course i have a couple more uh, questions for brandon but this is time for for the students to ask and be inquisitive and to be game time ready 
Um, so I don't really have any questions, but as far as like reading material, some things I would definitely recommend. I actually even haven't got a chance to fully read it, but um, there's these two books that were actually I've been recommended that have been super helpful to the people that I've been recommended by. And it's a uh, one book. It's Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. I can't pronounce that art, the author's name. It's like Shun Ryu Suzuki, but it's um, basically this book that kind of teaches you to be mindful and present and uh, give you more like agile thinking. And this was actually something that Steve Jobs read. And he said that it pretty much like changed his life on how we uh, approach business and all uh, those aspects. And then the other book was, was it? It's Zero to One by Peter Thiel, um, which was basically, I've, I've referenced it so many times in my, uh, this semester, my project, but it's basically just about um, like open innovation and kind of just, um, idea of either starting from scratch or just kind of uh like how we touched in early modules building upon existing ideas how that's still innovation but it just um a good solid perspective into innovation essentially so they're definitely two good reads i'd recommend great thank you marshall um hey Brandon, you were talking earlier about how part of your job was managing expectations and stresses. For our project, we're trying to fix like a small scale problem within like our community. And I was wondering if you had any good advice on like how to manage the expectation of that. Because it's not supposed to be like a large scale thing. It's supposed to be like a very small scale thing. So we don't want it to seem like we're trying to solve like world hunger or something like that. I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, no, I mean, I can't really relate it specifically to what you guys are accomplishing, but in my role, when it comes to managing expectations, you know, if people have value and they know that that value can translate into being admitted into a graduate degree, they want to know that as soon as possible, right? But it's always up really about, in my case, controlling the language and making sure that the language is not procedural or mandatory or it's formal that you can't expect to know an answer outside of our policy, right? So it's always about really crafting language and making sure that, you know, you're going to get an admission decision within an estimated two to four weeks. Um, just something as simple as like that, right? But the other aspect is really being able to, whatever you're standing in front of, whether you, whether you represent an organization or a company, there's policies and procedures in place that are meant to make your job not easier, but allow you to control expectations because it's coming from a procedural and organizational standpoint. Um, so when it comes to managing those expectations, it's also about employing really great follow up. I always encourage trying to answer questions as best as possible. And if I don't have an answer, I'm going to let them know that I'm not going to pretend to fudge the truth, right? I'm going to let them know. I don't know this, but I will definitely get back to you. Be, I'll be in touch, please. You know, I'll be, back, be in touch by the end of the day. But in terms of managing expectations, I think it really also has to come down to what is the goal of your unit, your department, and setting a line, setting aside like a plan. What is your strategic vision? How are you approaching the situation? How are you going to solve the problem? If you put that out in front, that allows people to approach you with some sort of idea of what you're trying to accomplish without trying to demolish it to a certain extent. If you, I guess, does that answer your question? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. If, if I want to connect the two, here, here's how I would also connect them or, or frame it. So Brian, uh, Brandon mentioned the idea of having that strategy or, or selecting language. So while Marshall, I'm saying you need to solve or solve a very small and narrow problem, if, if it's well, to go out and tackle the problem of all traffic everywhere, we need to start somewhere. In fact, that's part of a tech strategy for the bigger goal of solving. So be smart and work smarter and not harder. That one task, that one small tactical task a, or testing, not necessarily solving, but testing if a solution helps in a, in a very small case, because then it could possibly be in many cases or broader or in different places, therefore solve even more of that bigger traffic problem. Does, does that help? And I think that's a bit what Brandon was saying, because so even if you might say we're solving this one traffic problem 
intersection to this intersection. But the reality is, if we can solve it there, we may be able to solve it in a thousand other places, 10,000 other places, 100,000 other places. And it's through those prototypes, it's through those uh, beta, it's through those um, testing hypothesis that we will find out to what extent we solve that one small step and if if and or what needs to change that it can be adapted or whatever like to solve more within that same kind of similar context. So while the solution is for one, that's only because it can, see, can be seen as one small step, one tactical approach of a much bigger problem. Who else has a question for Brandon? Oliver? I don't really have necessarily a, a question, although Brandon, you mentioned that you uh, that you enjoy listening to NPR. I was just wondering if you have a like a favorite segment on on NPR because I enjoy it every every morning usually. Yeah, to be honest, it's mostly just kind of on all day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I found that working remotely. It gives me my own space and I have my own autonomy to do what I want, but just the social atmosphere of hearing people talk and having that presence around really helps. So it's really kind of on all day. Um, I love tiny desk concerts. Those are just always a really fun time, especially yeah. online on YouTube. But for the most part, it's kind of like I don't want to find myself cycling through sensationalized news sources that are just like fear mongering me and giving me this amount of stress. I'd rather just have one constant stream of reliable content and neutral resources. But um, cool. but yeah, I mean, I think NPR, there's also the community radio station here, um, 88.5, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, I mean, I also, I think it's worthwhile to, I don't want to say I don't look at other perspectives, but I, sometimes I do look at other perspectives just to kind of see what their verbiage is like, what they're looking at or what they're promoting, because even though it's not necessarily, I hate to think of politics as tribalism and us versus them, but it is an advantage to know what your competitors advantages are, right? Or what they're planning to do. Um, so that's kind of a weird segue from NPR. Um, but yeah, it's kind of on all the time, honestly. Yeah. All right, cool, thanks. But that is also considered research, right? If you're researching what your competitors are doing, so you can build a better product or a better service, which is very the same thing um, when Brandon mentioned this idea of if you want a job or uh, to build that network or to close that deal, and you need a certain ex experience or knowledge base, and he used the example of Salesforce, but it could be many other things. It could be SQL, it could be uh, DRMs, it could be whatever, enterprise software, uh, financial experience or whatever. The point is you can go out and research and study it and then say, I'm self-training myself or I understand this to a certain level. I passed this on the free certification websites and or training that's out there. So there's this is the special sauce that I was referring to, right? This is a trick or something that you, Brandon, knew that we didn't know, we didn't know. And that helps us get ahead and how we, so this is language back to what Marshall. Well, yeah, we may not be an expert in Salesforce, but I made an effort because I'm getting time ready. I went out and started training myself. I put it on my resume. Now it's going to be tagged with how they do their searches through AI and, and their HR. That will be flagged. And then when you have the interview, say, sell track this level. I've also complimented with this experience, this experience, and this experience, and now you are so far ahead than where you would have been if you didn't put it on the resume and compared to the people who didn't know that special or that spice, bam, in that new recipe of career and that journey or the, that repertoire, these tools that you need in order to make, add value from your own experiences and skills. Wonderful. I'd like to, any last questions? Uh, I pose a couple questions or last question with us with with Brandon. Any any last questions from from the from the group? Not All off right. the top of my head. Cool. All right. This is wonderful, Brandon. I'm always 
with you share with me and I always learn from you uh, and what you share with the class and the students. And these are invaluable. These are things that I wish I knew uh, when I was. I mean, it's so that's the other thing. These are or, or advice, but I would ask like to even frame it slightly different. Even for students, but what advice if you could go back and. Uh, or share some advice and wisdom with your younger self, if it's while you were in school or even before, other than the points that you mentioned that comes to mind that that you're like, oh, I, I wish I would have done that differently or. I, um, if you could talk to your younger self. Yeah, I think. I mean, I could always look back and definitely say I wish I would have done something differently, but I think if I would have switched my perspective a little bit differently, that would have really helped. Um, I always put myself. This is kind of just in general, but I have black and white thinking. It's either this or that. It's either negative or positive. It's either um, bad or good. And what I realized is thinking in that way really shielded me from seeing what else is in between and how I can approach that situation in a different manner. So I think for the, for the most part, it's really thinking about a like, kind of happenstance. It's an obstacle or an opportunity, or it can be something in between. Um, you know, one example was, <laughs> I remember I quit my first full-time job ever. I had a nine to five job and it, it made me miserable. I quit it and, you know, definitely it was an impulsive decision, shouldn't have done it, but I had that time to really reassess what I wanted to do and what made me happy. Um, Definitely still recommend go see a therapist as soon as you can. Everybody needs therapy. I should have done that a little sooner. But but yeah, I think it's it's really about making sure that your perspective isn't just two polar opposites. You know, there, there's just value to understanding the whole spectrum. Well, this programs uh, uh, book that Steve Jobs Zen Buddhism talks about equanimity. It talks about one take that nothing needs to be black or white or red or blue or whatever. But in fact, uh, there's ways of looking at things um, in a way that it doesn't have this polarized. And having this has advantages as well, but very challenging to to master all the times because we are finite beings. We have challenges to you know summarize the analysis to all the information. And we choose black and white to help reduce risk and everything. And if we can get a skill or a perspective that helps mitigate that risk or limit our confusion and, and we can make the most opportunities of that. So uh, uh, Brandon, I could not thank our morning together and with us and sharing your wisdom and advice. I would like to say that today has been a wonderful kind of door and window to how to add that special sauce, add those other factors that create an even more valuable or more unique experience or more, we'll say, robust um, uh, mo momentum as you, you walk out of this door at USF with your program, et cetera, and in so I couldn't be happier. So now is our time to find the second best place on a Tuesday to be uh, outside of our meeting. So, and let's give Brandon a big round of applause. Thank you. I'll catch up with you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah, stay safe out there, everyone. You as well.